stage is yours. Thank you. Yeah, I'm so excited. I've really been looking forward to this day in London before I fly back. Um, yeah, so I'm from Unity, and um, those of you who don't know Unity yet, uh, it's, it's a gaming platform, but it's more than that. It's like a 3D uh, environment. Uh, we have about 60% of the world market of mobile games. So 60% of all mobile games are written on Unity. 90-something uh, percent of, of, of VR, etc. It's crazy. We have 1.3 million developers on Unity, uh, shipping thousands of games every month. And we're being, these games are being played with about 1.5 billion uh, players every month. Uh, so 1.5 billion unique players playing a Unity game every month, yeah? Uh, and I tell you all this because it's important for you to understand that we're putting AI into Unity, yeah? So we're making it available to 1.3 million developers growing fast, and all these billion people are going to play games that's going to have AI in it. So that's what's, that's what's going to talk about today. I... Uh, I've been working in, in companies that have been running AI or machine learning at Uber, Amazon, Microsoft, Stata, IBM Research. And uh, I often run into this thing doing machine learning that has now become sort of more like AI uh, in, in, in sort of the common language. And people are asking me, you know, what, what is it? Yeah? Is it Siri and Alexa? And I'm like, no, there's a lot of machine learning in those systems, but it's not really AI. It's, it's, it's hand-wired, you know, handcrafted stuff, yeah? Amazon and Netflix recommendations, sort of really, you're watching some movies, we figure out what movies you like to watch and what you haven't watched yet that other people like you like to watch. Machine learning, but not really what I would call AI. Fraud detection services, been around for a long time, your credit card is using that, your bank is using that, equity trading, that's, that's new, it's looking at a lot of data sources, uh, you know, algorithmic trading, etc. It's not really intelligence. Uh, your Facebook feed, I think we're going to skip that one for today. Uh, and then, of course, every other job title on LinkedIn is also AI nowadays. Yeah. Uh, so none of that is really intelligent. So what is, what is real intelligence here? And uh, the dictionary says something like acquiring, applying knowledge and skills. Yeah, still very abstract. Um, so what, what, what is it? Well, what is the only real intelligence that we truly know? Yeah. Well, that is the intelligence in biological systems, yeah? That's the only intelligence we truly know. So when we ask what intelligence is, that's where we have to go and look for it, yeah? Uh, so more concretely, it's really the sensors and the computation in that nature created. Uh, and, and there's a reason nature created this, yeah? Um, one of the reasons is that to survive, whether you're a plant or you're an animal, uh, you, have to, you have to consume ener energy because you're sort of, there's this entropy thing, yeah, that wants to flatten everything and to be a plant or mouse or, an or human, you need energy to maintain structure, yeah? Uh, and while we do that, whether we're a plant, you know, sitting in, in, in the sunlight or we're a little mouse trying to get food, we have to be careful not to get eaten by something else doing that, yeah? So that's, that's the two things, yeah, that nature, uh, nature sort of forced, uh, that nature, nature needs intelligence for, yeah? Uh, we also uh, need to become more abundant. We're gonna skip that lesson today. And then we're gonna go to the fourth principle, which is essentially that there's physics, so I climb the tree to get an apple, I fall down and break my neck, yeah? Um, so those four principles are really I mean, like, there's maybe a universe, some, some alternate universe somewhere where, we, where physics are so, so there's no entropy and we don't need any of that and we can sit down all day and be happy and not intelligent, yeah? We can be a rock and nothing happens to us, yeah? Um, so, nature also created some uh, infrastructure for this intelligence, yeah? So, One of them is, 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 is chemical mechanisms, yeah? So, so we use chemistry to, 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 to create some kind of signaling system to implement intelligence, yeah? Uh, we use cellular structures, yeah? Cells are, are this thing that's needed 
so you see sort of the recursion here. Yeah? We, need, we need this structure that entropy hates um, to, to create intelligence. Yeah? We actually have multicellular structures yeah? where we use chemical messaging between the cells and we add uh, sensors to that. Yeah? Nature uh, added uh, very early on uh, probably so, uh, things like taste and smell. Uh, we know that vision came during the, the Cambrian explosion 450 million years ago. I've seen some theories that, that, that the eye evolved in just 350,000 years. It, it looks like it came very sudden. There were photosensitive cells, uh, and they quickly evolved into something that was an eye structure. Yeah? But it happened suddenly in a very short time frame. Yeah? So, so nature keeps inventing these things around uh, to, to, improve, to improve the ability to, to support intelligence. Yeah? So, uh, I like to think about um, our gaming engine, our 3D engine with a spatial environment, yeah, and a physics engine in there. Think about games, yeah, that this is really a self-sufficient ecosystem, yeah. Now you have gravity, you have inertia, you have your collision, and you have Actually, you have structure in there, yeah? So you have what I would call your private AI biodome when you have a gaming engine and you throw some deep learning networks in there. Then you actually have what, what nature set up uh, that it needed to create intelligence, yeah? So you have a physical world, a closed world, and then you have deep neural networks so now you can actually start exploring intelligence, yeah? And um, here we go. That's what you can do with these gaming engines, yeah? So there are generally out there, if you look, if you browse the web, there are really kind of three different approaches out there to these uh, artificial uh, environments where you can explore AI. And one of them, uh, one set of those are, are, are visually based. So it's basically using convolutional networks and seeing things and the learn how to, to, to navigate environments, uh, shooter uh, situations or single shooter applications and things like that. Yeah? There are another set of environments out there that are physical. They're much more concerned not about the vision but about the physics. So there's a physics engine in there, and you have systems that learn to, to walk, and it's basically about learning physics and uh, learning from physics and try to create something, some motion, uh, some uh, uh, motion control, etc. Yeah? The third one of them are cognitive. Uh, most famous uh, here in London is things like Deep Deep Mind's work uh, with Go. Yeah? There's no really not a lot of physics and not a lot of vision in that. Yeah? It's more about uh, planning and carry out a plan, yeah? Um, what, what we look at with Unity is that we have all three of those, yeah? We have an ecosystem, we have an ecosystem of very advanced 3D, high fidelity graphics, very complex environment visually, we have a physics engine in there. We actually have a pluggable physics engine, so you can put other physics engines in there if you look for, for some more advanced and uh, more accurate physics. And, uh, and you have the ability to solve problems in there uh, that are set up in game-like situations. Yeah? So you have the cognitive aspect as well. Yeah? Um, I have issues with this thing. Come on. Here we go. I want to talk a bit about nature's uh, method of learning, which we call reinforcement learning, um, which is uh, a learning method that's very important to me. And it's important to nature. Sorry, well, it's not important to me, but it's important to nature. Yeah? So I gave you all this infrastructure, yeah? And the basic learning mechanism in that infrastructure is reinforcement learning. It's about observing actions. It's uh, And move on. <laughs> Action is about, this is hard. It's about observing 
take action, observing your environment, take action, and then uh, get a reward from that. Yeah? So you, you capture a reward, and then you move around in that circle from what we call exploration to exploit. Yeah? This, is, uh, this is the fundamental uh, way that, that learning in nature happens. Yeah? Give me another one. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and uh, I want to quickly try to. There we go. I'm going to show you uh, a, a small uh, reinforcement learning experiment we did at Unity. It's basically uh, building a system, a very simple system, uh, using a standard reinforcement learning algorithm where. Uh, we want to see if we can uh, figure out uh, to whether a chicken can learn to cross the road uh, by four movements, left, right, forward, backward. We only observe the pixels, uh, and then there are two reward signals. One reward signal is that you, uh, the chicken get hit by a car and it dies. That's a negative reward. And the other one is that it collects a gift package. Uh, and that's a positive reward. And you can see the video here, if we can get to it. <laughs> there we go. Um, and what you will see in this video is the chicken, is, is this is from Tabula Rasa, clean slate. Yeah? The chicken knows nothing. It moves a little more backward than forward. It's just, but look in a moment, it hits a gift package, bang, and it gets killed by a car. Two pieces of, two bits of information right there within 15 seconds, yeah? You do that for half an hour, you get pretty good as a chicken to cross the road, yeah? Uh, you collect gift packages, you avoid the cars generally, not always. Um, and uh, there's no software engineer who, who's doing any planning here, anything. Yeah? It's a generic reinforcement learning algorithm. It's the one that we use for all you know, our problems. After six hours of training, the chicken becomes superhuman. You know why it's moving forward like that all the time? Did we program in there that you have to cross the road? No, I only said don't get killed by being hit by a car and collect gift packages. So why is it moving forward? That's emergent behavior. There are more gift packages there in the future than there's behind me. Yeah? So I, I just want you to understand there's a lot of stuff going on in reinforcement learning. You have some very basic principles and you get very advanced behavior. What we call some of it is emergent behavior, yeah? And that is how nature works, yeah? Very simple objectives gives very, very complex behavior. Yeah. There we go. Uh, we are making this kind of stuff available to, to all our developers, yeah? And what we want them to do is to, this is really hard, I can't move on. <laughs> yeah, but I have a lot of nexts. <laughs> uh, so basically, we create an environment for our developers to do this, to, to teach the chicken to cross the road, yeah? Using reinforcement learning. Uh, the way it works is, is this is all open source. I'm going to give you a URL in a moment. But it's basically to create environments, to train the agents, and then uh, embed those agents in environments. And these environments can be games, but they can also be more... Uh, you know, important simulations, if you want, of, of some real-world problems. We have a bunch of environments in there that we make, uh, have made available to our developers. Uh, I'm going to show you a few of them, uh, but the point is that uh, developers can take these environments and modify them for their own purposes. Uh, you have seen a lot of this stuff in the press from other companies, <laughs> but we actually make it uh, make it easy for, for any developer out there to do this. There's the, the balancing pad, so using reinforcement learning to learn to balance a ball. It takes 30 seconds of training, and it figures out how to balance a ball, yeah? You have four movements, just keep the ball up there. The negative reward is the ball drops down, yeah? Um, I like the next one. Uh, it, needs to, it needs to cross the wall, yeah? But the wall is too high, yeah? So what it learns, like the chicken from scratch, is move the big blue cube over there, jump on the cube, jump over the wall. Yeah? So nobody coded this. Yeah? It's, a, it's the same generic learning algorithm. Yeah? It's just trying over and over and over, exploring initially, totally random, and learning from that and becoming better and better. Yeah? I like this one. 
And this is actually an example of LSTM that you just heard about in the keynote. Uh, it's an interesting one. The little blue guy comes up and needs to read the color of the big, big cube. And if the color is red, take the red exit. If it's orange, take the orange exit, yeah? So this is an example of memory and reinforcement learning together. So uh, in this particular example, the cool thing is that we don't tell it that the color matters. It learns that as well. So it learns what to remember, what is important for success. And it, in this case, uh, I think we have like 20 steps uh, LSTM. So it, 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 it comes up, it, it, it notices something. Initially, it doesn't know what it's looking for. It could be the shape, it, among other things. But it's the color that matters. It learns that. And then it learns to remember that color in the subsequent steps where it moves beyond the big cube. Yeah? Because the moment it moves beyond, it can't see it any longer. In a traditional, in a simple reinforcement learning, wouldn't work here because it wouldn't be able to remember. But you take reinforcement learning, you throw in a little LSTM uh, that Jürgen talked about, and it can remember these sequences, yeah? The uh, last one here on these ones is, uh, is, is the soccer example. And in this one, we basically have two players. One player gets, uh, has a negative penalty when a goal is scored on the team, the other player has a positive for, for scoring on the other team. Yeah? When you train those, one of them become a goalie. You didn't tell them to be a goalie, but you just told them prevent scoring. And what happens is that they will, that they will stand in front of the goal and defend it. The other one, we say, you have to score, they become a striker and plays. A yeah? couple of notes here. We train them together. First we train the striker, then we train the goalie, then we put them together, and now the, the striker is trying to score on the goalie, and they both get better. Yeah? And then at the end of the day, we just clone them. Yeah? So we have two teams and play against each other. Yeah? I'm going to show you a couple of other uh, environments that we are going to make available um, over, uh, uh, I think, next week. Yeah. Next week, you have seen these ones from DeepMind and OpenAI, Open maybe especially DeepMind, uh, using reinforcement learning to learn a ragdoll to walk. Yeah? So these uh, things, they don't know how to walk. You use reinforcement learning to train them. We're making that available so everybody can do that. Yeah? It's easy. Download it. Play with it. The algorithms are there, the environments are there. Uh, this, is, this is basically an attempt to democratize all this work, so you don't have to go to YouTube and watch videos. You can actually do this stuff yourself. Yeah? Um, I want to show the next video. Next. <laughs> no? Oops. That was not it. <laughs> I'm gonna, you have to see this video, so we need to get back to it. There we go. This is actually really cool. So reinforcement learning with random exploration to exploit, yeah? learning from random. When you have environments that are too complex, too sparse, so let me quickly tell you. This is a house with rooms, there's a button. It needs to push the button to create a pyramid. On top of the pyramid is a gold bar or whatever, gold cube. It needs to collect that cube, yeah? So it needs to learn. It knows nothing like the chicken. Again, it knows absolutely nothing. So it needs to figure out that I have to push the button. I have to see the cube, find the cube. I have to knock over the cube. Look, push the button. Then go and find the cube. Come on. Go. Now it's go searching for the cube. It's over there. It saw it. Hit the cube. So, well, hit the, the pyramid so you get to the cube. Yeah? A very, very complex and very sparse. So it, if you do this randomly, you will actually never really learn it. You have to be smarter than that. What we do here is that we combine reinforcement learning algorithms. We use one for extrinsic value. 
collect these gold cubes. That sort of get rich, yeah? Get rich. But we also move into what we call agency, intrinsic values, yeah? So we say we have another machine learning system saying, look around, don't be random. Look around, and if you see something, pick the thing that you know the least about, yeah? So moving around in a room, yeah, that's okay. But then he sees the button in a room, and he says, hmm, I don't know, I'm curious, I don't know what happens if I push that button, yeah? So when we use this, the trivial reinforcement learning like the chicken, you will actually never learn it. But if we add curiosity in there, so we have two machine learning systems helping the little blue cube, yeah? Suddenly it can solve a very hard problem. And that is a very important example because that is where the future is going to bring us. You, you heard Jürgen talk about LSTM, that's memory. We have CNN for vision, yeah? You have INN, which is a, a predecessor of LSTM. When you start putting multiple of those together, you suddenly get very complex behavior. When you start looking at intrinsic values over extrinsic values, so that's agency. So the little blue guy has this kind of intrinsic value is that I'm curious, I'm only gonna try stuff where I have no idea what will happen, which makes it much more efficient in learning uh, new tasks, yeah? So, uh, this is what we make available to our developers. We released the first version six months ago. We're doing a next version next week. Uh, we keep iterating over this. We have thousands and thousands of developers suddenly practicing really advanced AI in really advanced environments, yeah? And uh, I think that uh, biology has something really interesting in store for us. Attention is something that's really uh, undervalued, which is that uh, Self-driving cars, they look all around them all the time. Uber cars, like 600 sensors, looking at everything is important. Well, it's not really, yeah? So uh, systems will learn to understand what's important and not important. Um, we have episodic memory, which is uh, if I burn my finger on a candle as a child, I will remember that once and for all, yeah? I won't do that again. Uh, so we need that uh, into our systems. Uh, long, long short LSTM is very powerful. Uh, continuous learning where we just keep, keep learning and we never really forget the old stuff we learned, yeah? And um, imitation, uh, imagination. Uh, I saw this article saying that computers don't dream. Yes, they do, because you can run all these simulations, yeah? This is what we do all the time. We run simulations in our heads and think about what if this happens, what if that happens, and then when we go into a situation, we are super prepared because of that. Massive simulation. Run a million instances of Unity in some cloud service, generate more data than humanity have ever seen for a particular problem domain, yeah? And then, as I mentioned, agency, intrinsic values uh, are, are very, very, very important in having systems solve very hard problems. Uh, stuff I'm talking about here, uh, three years ago, no, two years ago, maybe one year ago, I don't know, some of this stuff, the curiosity is I think is like six months old, yeah? So this goes extremely fast right now. Thank you very much.